sweet in the back room and tip the round. No uh, the hell with it. Let the dump get pinched. I'm true with this lousy job anyway. Huh. Been scrapping, huh? Started off on your periodical, ain't you? Yeah, ain't you glad? I'm out of my feet holding down your job. You said if I take your day, you'd relieve me at six. And here it's at best 1 a.m. Well, you're taking over now, get me? No matter how plastered you are. Uh, plastered, hell, I wish I was. I locked up a gallon, but it don't hit me right. And to hell with the job, I'm gonna tell Harry I'm quitting. Uh, well, I'm quitting too. I played sucker for that crummy blonde long enough to let the kid me into waking. From now on, I take it easy. I'm glad you're getting some sense. Yeah, I hope you're getting some. Wait, with a price sap you've been tending bar when you got two good hustlers in your stable. Yeah, but I ain't no sap now. I'll learn them when they get back from Coney. <laughs> Jeez, that chorus sure played you for a dope, feeding you that marriage on a farm hop. Yeah, Icky got it right. A lousy pipe dream. It was that poor and Sherry flips on me, woke me up. All the way walking to the ferry, every gin mill we come to, she dragged me into blower. I got thinking, Christ, what won't she want when she gets the ring on her finger and I'm hooked? So I tells her with the ferry, kiddo, you can go to Jersey or to hell, but count me out. She said it was her told you to go to hell because you start hitting the booze. I got thinking, too. Jeez, won't I look sweet with a wife that if you put all the guys you stay with side by side, they reach to Chicago. That kind of dame you can't trust him. The minute your back is turned to cheating with the Iceman or someone. I mean, Hickey done me a favor making we wake up. Only it was fun kind of me and Cora kidding ourselves. So where is that son of a bitch, Hickey? I want one good sock at the guy. Just go on the next button and he'll do a B in the morgue. I'll take a chance. I'll go into the chair. Keep away from him, Chuck. He ain't here now anyway. He went out the phone, he said. I got a hunch he beat it. But if he does come back, you don't know him. If anyone asks you, get me the chair. Maybe that's where he's going. I don't know nothing, see? Well, it looks like he croaked his wife. You mean she really was cheating on him? And I don't blame the guy. Now, who's blaming him? Is any of the gang wise? Larry is, and the boss ought to be. I tried to wise the rest of them to stay clear of him, but they're all so licked, I don't know if they got it. Oh, I don't give a damn what he done to his wife. But if he gets the hot seat, I won't go into no morning. Me neither. Not if this thrown it in my face, I'm a pimp. What if I am? And what's he done to Harry? Geez, the poor old slob is so licked he can't even get drunk. And all the gang. I couldn't help feeling sorry for the poor bums when they showed up tonight. One by one, looking like pooches, with their tails between their legs that everyone been kicking till they were too punched drunk to feel it no more. Jimmy tomorrow was the last. Schwartz the copper brung him in. Seen him sitting on a dock on West Street, looking at the water and crying. Schwartz thought he was drunk and I let him think it. But he was called sober. He was trying to jump in and didn't have the nerve, I figured it. Jeez, there ain't enough guts left in the whole gang to bottle a mosquito. Oh, the hell with them. Who cares? Give me a drink. I see you've been hitting the red eye, too. Yeah, but it don't do no good. I can't get drunk right. This dirty dinge was able to get a snoop full and pass out. Jeez, even Hickey can't phase a nigger. You'd think he was phased if you seen him come in. Stinko. And he pulled a gun and said he'd plug Hickey for insulting him. Then he dropped it and began to cry. And said he wasn't a gambler man or a tough guy no more. He got drunk, panhandling drinks and nigger joints, I suppose. I guess they felt sorry for him. Well, you ain't got no business in a bar after hours. Why don't you chuck him out? Oh, the hell with it. Who cares? Yeah, I don't. Excuse me, white boy. I don't want to be where I'm not wanted. My pig's in the back room, ain't she? I want to collect the dough I wouldn't take this morning like a sucker before she blows it. I'm coming too. I'm true working. I ain't no lousy bartender. I'm waiting, baby. Dig. Yeah, I've been expecting you. I got it all ready here. Jeez. Imagine me kidding myself. I wanted to marry a drunken pimp. It's nothing, baby. Imagine what a sap I'd have been when I can get you a dough just as easy without it. Cemetery. A little tight wad. You're still around. Ask Larry. 
He knows I'm here all right, although he's pretending not to. You'd like to forget I'm alive. He's trying to kid himself with that grandstand philosopher stuff. But he knows he can't get away with that now. <laughs> he kept himself locked up in his room until a while ago, alone with a bottle of booze. He couldn't make it work, though. He couldn't even get drunk. So he had to come out. Well, there must have been something up there he's even more scared to face than he is me and Hickey. I guess he got looking at the fire escape. Thinking how handy it was if he was really sick of life and only had the nerve to die. And he's been thinking about me too, Rocky. He's trying to figure a way to get out of helping me. He loved her too, so he thinks I ought to take a hop off the fire escape. For God's sake, can't you say something? Larry. I think he must have done has got me so I don't know anymore what I did or why. I can't go on like this. I gotta know what I gotta do. Damn it. Are you trying to make me your executioner? Execution? Then you, th you think I... I don't think anything. I, su I suppose you think I had to die, huh? Because I sold out a lot of loudmouth fakers? <laughs> Don't make me laugh, I ought to get a medal. Oh, you little sap. You must still believe in the movement. I think he's right about him, isn't he, Rocky? And no, no good drunken tramp as dumb as he is ought to take a hop off the fire escape. Sure. I don't he. You or me. What the hell's the difference? Who cares? What am I doing here with you, Stu? I remember I had something in my mind to tell you. What? Oh, I got it now. I was thinking how you was both regular guys. I think, ain't two guys like them saps? To be hanging around like a couple of stew bums and wasting themselves? What do you think, Parrot? You ain't a bad looking guy. You could easily make some gal who's a good hustler and start a stable. And I'll help you and wise you up to the inside dope on again. Well, what about it? What if they do call you a pimp? I don't have anything to do with horse. I wish they were all in jail or dead. Right, stay a bum. But how about you, Larry? You ain't dumb. I sure you're old. But that don't matter. All the girls think you're racist. They fall for you like you were their uncle or old man or something. They like taking care of you. And the cops around here, they like you too. You wouldn't have to worry where the next drink's coming from or wear dirty clothes. Well, don't I look good to you? No, it doesn't look good, Rocky. I mean, the piece Hickey's brought you. It isn't contented enough if you have to make a pimp of everyone else. I'm a sap to waste my time on you. Stu bum is a stu bum. Like I was saying to Chuck, if anyone asks you, you don't know nothing about Hickey, get me? You never even heard he had a wife. Oh, jeez. We all ought to get drunk and stage a celebration when our bastard goes to the church. God, I'll celebrate with you. Drink to his long, long life in hell. Oh, poor devil. Now, that's pity, the wrong kind. He'll welcome the chair. Yes? What are you so damn scared about death for? I don't want your lousy pity. I hope you don't come back, Larry. We don't know nothing now. We're only guessing, see? But if that bastard keeps on talking... He'll I'll... come back and he'll keep on talking. He lost his confidence that the piece he sold us is the real McCoy, and it's made him uneasy about his own. He'll have to prove. That's a damn lie, Larry. 
I haven't lost confidence. By God, when I made up my mind to sell someone something I thought they ought to want, I've sold them. I mean, I don't think it's very kind of you to make that kind of a crack when I've been doing my best to help. Keep away from me, will you? I don't know nothing about you, see? Well, how's it coming, everybody? I'm sorry I had to leave you for a little while, but there's something I had to get finally settled. It's all fixed now. Well, when are you going to do something about this booze, Hickey? We can't pass out. <laughs> and you promised us peace. For God's sake, Harry, are you still harping on that same damn nonsense? You've kept it up all afternoon and night, and you got everybody else singing the same crazy tune. I've had about all I can stand. That's why I phoned. Excuse me, boys and girls, I, I don't mean that. Just that I worry about you when you play dead on me like this. I was hoping by the time I got back, you'd be like you ought to be. I thought you were deliberately holding back on me before when I was here because you didn't want to give me the satisfaction to show me that I had the right dope. And I did have, I know from my own experience. Well, I've explained that a million times. Now, you've all done what you needed to do. By rights, you should be contented with yourself and free from lying hopes and nagging dreams that torment you. But here you are, sitting around like a lot of stiffs cheating the undertaker. I can't figure it. Unless it's just your damn stubborn pig-headedness. Oh, hell. Don't act like this with me, gang. You're my old pals, the only friends I've got. You know, the one thing that I want is to see you happy before I go. There's damn little time left now. I made a date for two o'clock. So we've got to get busy right away and find out what's wrong. Can't you appreciate what you've got, for God's sake? Don't you see you're free to be yourselves now without feeling remorse or guilt or having to lie to yourselves about reforming tomorrow? Don't you see there is no tomorrow now? You're rid of it forever. You've killed it. You don't have to care a damn about anything anymore. You finally got the game of life licked. Don't you see that? Then why the hell don't you get drunk and sing Sweet Adeline? Why don't you laugh and celebrate and get pie-eyed? The only reason I can think of is you're putting on this rotten half-dead act just to get back at me, because you hate my guts. God, don't do that, gang. It makes me feel like hell to think that you hate me. It makes me feel that you suspected that I hated you. But that is a lie. Oh, I know I used to hate everybody in the world that wasn't as rotten a bastard as I was. But that's when I was still living in hell, before I faced the truth. And saw the one possible way to free poor Evelyn and give her the peace that she'd always dreamed about. Oh, put a bag over it. The hell with Evelyn. What if she was cheating? And who cares what you did to her? That's your funeral. We don't give a damn, see? All we want out of you is keep the hell away from us and give us a rest. The one possible way to make up to her for all that I made her go through. And get her rid of me so that I couldn't make her suffer anymore. And she wouldn't have to forgive me again. I saw I couldn't do it by killing myself like I'd wanted to for a long time. That would have been the last straw for her. She'd have died of a broken heart to think that I could do that to her. She'd have blamed herself, too. Or I just couldn't run away from her. She'd have died of grief and humiliation if I'd done that to her. She'd have thought I stopped loving her. You see, Evelyn loved me, and I loved her. And that was the trouble. Oh, it would have been easy to find a way out if she hadn't have loved me so much, or if I hadn't have loved her. But as it was, there was only one possible way. I had to kill her. Mad fool, can't you keep your mouth shut? We may hate you for what you've done this time, but we remember the old times when you brought laughter and kindness here instead of death. We don't want to know things that'll make us help send you to the chair. Shut up! You yellow faker, can't you face anything? Wouldn't I deserve the chair too if I... It's, it's worse if you kill someone and they have to go on living. Oh, I'd be glad of the chair. It, it 
wipe it out and squirm it with myself. I wish you'd get rid of that bastard, Larry. I can't have him pretending there's something in common between him and me. It's what's in your heart that counts. And there was love in my heart, not hate. You're a liar! I don't hate her, I couldn't! And anyway, it had nothing to do with her, you ask Larry. God damn you, stop shoving your rotten soul in my lap! Don't worry about the chair, Larry. I know you're still terrified by death. But when you've made peace with yourself, like I have, you won't give a damn. Listen, everybody. I've made up my mind. The only way I can clear this up for you so you'll realize how contented and carefree you ought to feel now that I made you get rid of your pipe dreams is to show you what a pipe dream did to me and Evelyn. And I'm certain if I tell you about it from the beginning, you'll appreciate what I've done for you and why I did it. And how damn grateful you ought to be instead of hating me. You see, even as kids, Evelyn and me... All we want is to pass out and get drunk and a little peace. All right, if that's the way you feel. I don't want to cram it down your throats. I don't need to tell anyone. I don't feel guilty. I'm only worried about you. What did you do to this booze? That's what we like to hear. Isn't that right, Jimmy? Yes. Quite right. It was all a stupid lie, my nonsense about tomorrow. Naturally, they would never give me my position back. And I would never dream of asking them. I didn't resign. I was fired for drunkenness. And it was absurd of me to excuse my drunkenness by pretending it was my wife's adultery that ruined my life. As Hickey guessed, I was a drunkard before that. I discovered early in life that living frightened me when I was sober. I've even forgotten why I married Marjorie. I had some idea of wanting a home, perhaps. But of course, I, I much preferred the nearest pub. Why Marjorie married me, God knows. She soon found out that I much preferred drinking all night with my pals to being at home in bed with her. So naturally, she was unfaithful. And I was glad to be free, even grateful to her, I think, for giving me such a, a good, tragic excuse. In the back room, if you want a drink. A guy named Hickman in the back room? I think I know the Listen names. Listen you, this is murder. It was Hickman himself phoned in and said we'd find him here around two. So that's who he phoned to. Yeah, he's in there. And if you want a confession, all you got to do is listen. You can't stop the bastard talking. I got to tell you, your being this way now gets my goat. And it's all wrong. It puts things in my mind. It makes me think that if I got balled up about you, then how do I know I wasn't balled up about myself? And that is just plain damn foolishness. But when you know the story of me and Evelyn, you'll see it was the only possible way out, for her sake. Only I gotta start way back at the beginning. Otherwise, you won't understand. You see, even as a kid, I was always restless. I had to keep on the go. You've heard the old saying that minister's sons are sons of guns? Well, that was me and then some. Home was like a jail. Listen to my old man whooping up hellfire and scaring those Hoosier suckers and the shelling out their dough only handed me a laugh. Although I gotta hand it to him, the way he sold him nothing for something. I guess I take after him. And that's what made me a good sell. Well, like I said, home was like jail and so was school. And so was that damn hick town. The only places I liked were the pool halls, where I could smoke sweet caprols and mop up a couple of beers, huh? Thinking I was a hell on wheel sport. We had one hooker shop in town. Of course, I liked that too. 
Not that I hardly ever had the entrance money. My old man was a tight old bastard. But I like to sit around the parlor and joke with the girls. And they like me, too. Because I kid them along and make them laugh. And you know how a small town is. Everybody got wise to me. They said I was a no-good tramp, but I didn't give a damn what they said. I hated everybody in the place. That is, except Evelyn. And I loved Evelyn. Even as a kid. And Evelyn loved me. Larry, I loved Mother no matter what she did. I still do. Yes, sir, as far back as I can remember. Evelyn and I loved each other. She always stood up for me. She wouldn't believe the gossip, or she pretended she wouldn't. No one could convince her that I was no good. Evelyn was stubborn as hell once she made up her mind. You know, even when I'd admit things and ask her forgiveness, she'd make excuses for me and defend me against myself. And she'd kiss me and she'd say that she knew that I wouldn't do it again and I said that I wouldn't and I'd promise, I'd have to promise. She was so damn sweet and good. Yet I knew darn well. No, sir, you couldn't stop Evelyn. Nothing on earth could shake her faith in me. Even I couldn't. She was a sucker for a pipe dream. Well, naturally, her family forbid her seeing me. <laughs> they were one of the town's best, rich for that hick bird. They owned the trolley line and the lumber company. Strict Methodist, too. Oh, did they hate my guts. <laughs> Even they couldn't stop Evelyn. She'd sneak notes to me, and we'd meet on the side. But I was getting more restless. The town was getting more like a jail. I made up my mind to beat it. I knew exactly what I wanted to be by that time. I met a lot of drummers around the hotel, and I liked them. They were always telling jokes, huh? They were sports, always on the move. I liked their life. And I knew I could kid people and sell things. The hitch was... How to get the railroad fare to the big town. Well, I told Molly Arlington my trouble. She was the man with the cat house. She liked me. She laughed and she said, hell, I'll stake you, kid. I'll bet on you with that grin of yours and that line of bull, you ought to be able to sell skunks for good riders. <laughs> and Molly was all right. She made me feel confident in myself. Well, I paid her back, too, first money I earned. I remember sending a kidding letter saying that I was peddling baby carriages and she and the girls had better get in on our bargain offer. Ho, 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 ho. That's getting ahead of my story. That last night before I left town, I had a date with Evelyn. And I got all worked up. She was so pretty and sweet and good. And I told her straight. I said, you better forget me, Evelyn, for your own sake. I'm no good and I never will be. Then I broke down and cried. And she just said, looking white and scared, why, Teddy, don't you still love me? And I said, love you. God, Evelyn, I love you more than anything in the world and I always will. And she said, nothing matters, Teddy. because nothing but death can stop my loving you. So when you're ready, you send for me and we'll be married. And I know I can make you happy, Teddy. And when you're happy, you won't want to do any of those bad things you've done anymore. And I said, of course I won't, Evelyn. And I meant it. I believed it. I loved her so much she can make me believe anything. You married her? You caught her cheating with the Iceman? And you croaked her? And all we want is to pass out in peace, bitches. So I beat it to the big town. I got a job easy. It was a cinch for me to make good. I had the knack. It was like a game, sizing people up quick, spotting what their pet pipe dreams were, and then kidding them along that line, pretending you believed what they wanted to believe about themselves. Then they liked you. They trusted you. They wanted to buy something to show their gratitude. It was fun. But still, all the while, I felt guilty. As though I shouldn't be having such a good time away from Evelyn. 
In each of my letters, I tell her how I missed her, but I'd warn her, too. I tell her about my faults, how I like my booze every now and then, and so on. But you couldn't shake Evelyn's belief in me or her dreams about the future. And then after each one of her letters, I'd be as full of faith as she was. So when I got enough saved to start us off, I sent for her and we got married. Christ, wasn't I happy for a while. And wasn't she happy? I don't care what anybody says. I'll bet there were never two people who loved each other more than me and Evelyn. Not only then, but ever afterwards. In spite of everything I did. Well, it's all there to start. Everything that happened afterwards. Well, I never could learn to handle temptation. I'd want to reform and mean it. And I promise her and I promise myself and I believe it. I'd even tell her, it's the last time, Evelyn. And she'd say, I know it's the last time, Teddy. You'll never do it again. And that's what made it so hard. That's what made me feel like such a rotten skunk. Her always forgiving me. My playing around with women, for instance, it was just a harmless good time to me. It didn't mean anything, but I'd know what it meant to her. So I'd swear to myself, never again. But you know how it is traveling around those damn hotel rooms. You get to seeing things in the wallpaper. I get so damn bored, so lonely and homesick. But at the same time, sick of home. I feel free. I want to celebrate a little. Well, I never drank on the job, so it had to be dames. And it's hard. What I'd want was some tramp that I could be myself with without being ashamed. Someone I could tell a dirty joke to and she'd laugh. <laughs> Gee, all the lousy jokes I've had to listen to and pretend was funny. Sometimes I try a joke that I thought was a real corker on Evelyn. And she'd always make herself laugh. But I could tell she thought it was dirty and not funny. And she always knew about the tarts that I'd been with when I came home from a trip. She'd kiss me and look in my eyes, and she'd know. And I could see in her eyes her not wanting to know. And telling herself, even if it is true, he can't help it. They tempt him. He's lonely. He hasn't got me. It's only his body. He doesn't love them. I'm the only one he loves. And she was right, too. I never loved anyone else. Couldn't if I wanted to. She forgave me even when it all had to come out in the open. You know how it is when you keep taking chances. You may be lucky for a long time, but you get nicked in the end. I picked up a nail from some tart in Altona. Yeah, and she picked it up from some guy. It's all in the game. I had to do a lot of lying and stalling when I got home, but it didn't do any good. The quack I went to got all my dough. And he told me I was cured. And I believed him. But I wasn't. And poor Evelyn. But she did her best to make me believe that she fell for my lie about how traveling men get things from drinking cups on, on trains. Anyway, she forgave me. The same way she forgave me every time I show up after a periodical drunk! And you all knew what I looked like after one of those. You saw me. Like something lying in the gutter that no alley cat would lower himself to drag in. Something they threw out of the DT ward at Bellevue, along with the garbage. Something that should be dead. What is isn't. Evelyn wouldn't have heard from me in a month or more. She'd been waiting there alone. The neighbors feeling sorry for her out loud and shaking their heads. That was until she got me to move to the outskirts, where there weren't any next door neighbors. Then the door had opened, and I stumbled. Looking like what I just said. Into her home that she always kept so spotless and clean. And I swore it'd never happen again. And now I'd have to start swearing again that this was the last time I could see disgust. Having a battle in her eyes with love, but love always won. She'd make herself kiss me. though nothing had happened. As 
though I just come home from a business trip. She'd never complain or bawl me out. Christ, can you imagine what a guilty skunk she made me feel? If only once she admitted that her pipe dream about tomorrow and my behaving myself would never be any good, but she wouldn't. She was stubborn as hell. Once she set her mind anything, you couldn't shake her faith that it had to come through tomorrow. Well, it was the same old story. Over and over for years and years. And it kept piling up inside her and inside me. God, can you picture what I made her suffer? And all the guilt that she made me feel? And how I hated myself? If she only hadn't been so damn good, if she'd been the same kind of wife that I was a husband, God, sometimes I used to pray that she'd... I'd even say to her, go on, why don't you, Evelyn? Serve me right, I wouldn't mind, I'd forgive. Of course, I pretend I was kidding. The same way I used to joke here about her being in the hay with the ice man. She'd have felt so hurt if I said it seriously. She'd have thought I stopped loving her. Ah, I suppose you think I'm a liar. That no woman could have stood all she stood and still loved me so much. That it isn't human for a woman to be so pitying and forgiving. Well, I am not lying. And if you'd ever seen her, you'd realize that I wasn't. It was written all over her face. Sweetness, love, pity, forgiveness. Well, but wait, I'll uh, show you. I will carry your picture. No, I'm forgetting. I tore it up afterwards. I didn't need it anymore. Jeez. I bring up Mother's picture, Larry. Her eyes kept following me around all the time. They seemed to be wishing I was dead. It kept piling up, like I said. I got so I thought about it all the time. And I hated myself more and more, thinking of all the wrong I'd done to the sweetest woman in the world that loved me so much. It even got so I cursed myself for a lousy bastard every time I saw myself in the mirror. I felt such pity for her, it drove me crazy. You never believe it, would you, Larry? A guy like me that's knocked around so much could feel such pity. I got so every night I'd wind up hiding my face in her lap, bawling and begging for forgiveness. Of course, she'd always comfort me and say, never mind, Teddy. I know you won't ever again. Christ, I loved her so. But I began to hate that pipe dream. I began to think I was going bunkhouse because sometimes I couldn't forgive her for forgiving me. I even caught myself hating her for making me hate myself so much. You know, there's a limit to the guilt you can feel and the forgiveness and pity you can take. You have to begin blaming somebody else, too. He got so. Sometimes when she kissed me, it was like she was doing it on purpose to humiliate me. As if she spit in my face. Well, I saw how crazy and rotten that was of me. And I just hated myself more and more. You'd never believe that I could hate so much. Well, Larry, a good-natured, happy-go-lucky slob like me. As the time got nearer when I was due to come here for my drunk around Harry's birthday, I got nearly crazy. I kept swearing to her every night that this time I really wouldn't until I made it a real final test to myself and to her. And she kept encouraging me and saying, I can see you really mean it now, Teddy. I know you'll conquer it this time and we'll be so happy. And when she'd say that and kiss me, I'd believe it too. And then she'd go to bed. And I'd stay up because I couldn't sleep. And I didn't want to disturb her rolling and twisting around. I get so damn lonely. I get to thinking how peaceful it was here. Sitting around with the old gang, getting drunk and forgetting about love. 
laughing and singing and joking and swapping lies. And finally, I knew I had to come. And I knew if I came this time, it would be the finish. Because I'd never have the guts to go back and be forgiven again. And that would break Evelyn's heart. Because to her, that would mean I didn't love her anymore. That last night, I'd driven myself crazy trying to figure a way out for her. I went into the bedroom. And I was going to tell her it was the end. But I couldn't do that to her. She was sound asleep. And I thought, God, if only she'd never wake up, she'd never know. And then it came to me. The one possible way out for her sake. I remembered I'd given her a gun for protection while I was away. It was in the bureau drawer. She'd never feel any pain. She'd never wake up from her dream. So I... So I killed her. I may as well confess, Larry. There's no use lying anymore. You know anyway. I didn't give a damn about the money. It was because I hated her. And then I saw that I'd always known that was the only possible way to give her peace and free her from the misery of loving me. And I saw it meant peace for me, too, knowing she was at peace. I felt as though a ton of guilt was lifted off my mind. I remember I stood by the bed and suddenly I had a laugh. I couldn't help it. And I knew Evelyn would forgive me. I remember I heard myself speaking to her as though it was something that I'd always wanted to say. Well, you know what you can do with your pipe dream now. You damn bitch! No, I... Yes. Don't. Yes, that's it. Her and that damn movement pipe dream. Well, no, that's a lie! Good God, I could have never said that! If I had, I'd have gone insane! Why, I loved Evelyn better than anything in life! Boys, you're my old pals! You've known all Hickey for years! You know that I can never... Harry! Harry, you've known me longer than anybody else! You know that I must have been insane, don't you, Governor? Oh, who the hell cares? Insane? You mean you went really insane? Yes, sir! I couldn't have laughed! I couldn't have said that to her! Enough, Hickman. You know who we are. You're under arrest. Come along and spill your guts. No, talk, what we can get you, a... you owe me a break. I phoned and made it easy for you, didn't I? Just a few minutes. Harry, you know I couldn't have said that to Evelyn, don't you? Unless... And you've been crazy ever since. Everything you said and done here... Oh, you... Governor, up to your old tricks, eh? I see what you're driving at, but I can... Yes, of course, Harry. I've been out of my mind ever since. Ever since I've been here. You saw I was insane, didn't you? And it. I've had enough of your act. Save it for the jury. Now listen, you guys. Don't fall for his lies. He's starting to get foxy now and thinks he'll plead insanity. But he can't get away with that. Bitches, you dumb dick. You got a crush trying to tell us about Hickey. We've known him for years. And every one of us noticed he was nutty the minute he showed up here. If you'd seen the damn fool things he made us do. We only did him because we, because we, we hoped he, he'd come out of it if we kid him along and humor him. Ain't that right, fellas? Yeah. A fine bunch of rats covering up for a dirty, cold-blooded murder. Is that so? But geez, you know the old story. When St. Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland, they swam to New York and joined the police force. <laughs> <laughs> You stand up for your rights, for Jesus, Hickey. I've still got friends at the hall. I'll have this guy back in uniform, pounding the beat. Well, the only graft he'll get will be stealing tin cans from the goats. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you cockeyed old bum, for a plug nickel, I... Come on, you. Oh, I want to go, officer. I can hardly wait now. I should have phoned you from the house right afterwards. It was a waste of time coming here. I've got to explain to Evelyn, but I know she's forgiven me. She knows I was insane. You've got me all wrong, officer. I want to go to the chair. Crap! God, you're a dumb dick. Do you suppose I give a damn about life now? Why, you bonehead. 
I haven't got a single damn lying hope or pipe dream left. Don't worry, Hickey. They can't give you the chair. We'll testify you was crazy. Won't we, fellas? Yeah, sure, yeah, it'll be all right, Hickey. He's, he's gone. <laughs> Poor crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, but Jesus, I need a drink. Maybe it'll have the old kick. Now he's gone. Yeah, boss. Maybe we can get drunk now. May the chair bring him peace at last. Poor, tortured bastard. Yes, but he's the only one who needs peace, Larry. I can't feel sorry for him. He's lucky. He's through now. It's all decided for him. I wish it was decided for me. I've never been any good at deciding things. Even about selling out, it was that tart that the detective agency got after me to put it in my mind. You remember what Mother's like, Larry. She always decided what I must do. She made all the decisions for me. She doesn't like anyone but herself to be free. I suppose you think I have to make those ticks take me away with Hickey. How can I prove it, Larry? You think I was nutty because she's still alive. You're the only one who can understand how guilty I am. Because you know her, you know what I've done to her. You're the only one who can understand that I'm much guiltier than he is. That what I did is much worse than murder because she's dead and yet she has to live. She loves her freedom too much. I can't kid myself like Hickey. That she's at peace. As long as she lives, she'll never be able to forget what I've done to her. Not even in her sleep. She'll never have a second's peace. Jesus, Larry, say something. I'm not bluffing either that I was crazy. Afterwards, when I laughed and thought to myself, you know what you can do with your freedom pipe dream now, don't you, you damn old bitch? Go! Get the hell out of my God damn you before I choke it out of you! Go up! Go up? <sighs> Thanks, Larry. I can see now that's the only possible way I can ever get free from her. I guess I've known that all my life. <laughs> you ought to give Mother a little comfort, too. She'll finally be able to play the incorruptible mother of the revolution, whose only child's a proletarian. She'll be able to say, Justice is done! So may all traitors die! She'll be able to say, I'm glad he's dead. Long live the revolution! You know her, Larry. She's always a ham. Go for the love of Christ, you man, tortured bastard for your own sake. Thanks, Larry. That's kind. I know you were the only one who could understand my side eye. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hello, little Dan. Little monkey face. Don't be a fool. Buy me a drink. Sure, will you go? Tomorrow beneath the willow trees. Stop a fool. He can make you crazy, too. I'm glad, lady. They take that crazy Hickey away to asylum. He makes me have bad dreams. He makes me tell lies about myself. He makes me want to spit on all I've ever dreamed. Yes, I'm glad they take him to asylum. <sighs> I don't feel I'm dying now. He was selling death to me. That crazy salesman. I think I have a drink now, lady. My cheese, fellas. I'm feeling the old kicker. I'm a liar. It's put life back in me. It was Hickey that kept us from it. But, jeez, I know that sounds crazy, but he was crazy. He got all of us as bug house as he was. It's, it's dangerous, too. L look at me pretend to start for a walk just to keep him quiet. I know damn well it wasn't the right day for it. The sun was broiling, and the streets full of automobiles. I, I could feel myself getting sunstroke. An automobile damn near ran over me, didn't it, Rocky? He was watching us, Rocky, didn't it? The automobile boss? Sure I seen it. Just missed you. I thought you was a goner. On the word of an honest bartender. You're a bartender, all right. No one can say different. But the G's don't, don't pull that honest junk. You and Chuck ought to have cards in the burglars union. But <laughs> 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 well, this is good to hear someone laugh again. All the time that bass, uh, that, that uh, poor old Hickey was here, I didn't have the heart. Jeez, uh, I'm getting drunk and glad of it. <laughs> Come on, fellas. It's on the house. Oh. <laughs> ah, the poor old Hickey. We mustn't hold him responsible for anything he's done. Yeah. And, uh, we'll remember him the way we've always known him before. The kindest, biggest hearted guy that ever wore shoe leather. Yeah. Uh, the best. Fine chap, fine chap. Fine chap. Good luck to him with matter one. Come on, bottoms up. Christ. Why don't he? Why don't he what? Ah, don't be a fool. He is gone. He was crazy. Have a drink. What's the matter with you, lady? You look funny. Would you listen fall out in backyard? Well, I thank God not a me and Chuck did all we could to humor the poor nut. Um, imagine us going off like we really meant to get married. <laughs> when we ain't even picked out the farm yet. <laughs> I think, baby, we did it and we were serious. <laughs> I may as well say no. I detected his condition almost at once. Yeah. All that talk of his about tomorrow, for example. <laughs> he had a fixed idea of the insane. <laughs> it only makes them worse to cross them. <laughs> <laughs> Same with me, Jimmy. Only I spent the day at the park. I wasn't such a damn fool. <laughs> Picture my predicament if I had gone to the consulate. <laughs> and then the pal of mine there's a bit of a humorous blighter. <laughs> He'd have gotten me a job out of pure spite. <laughs> So I strolled about and finally came to roost in the park. And lo and behold, who should be on the neighboring bench but my battlefield companion, the boar that walks like a man. <laughs> who, if the British government had taken my advice, would have been removed from his fetid kraal in the veldt straight to the baboon's cage in the London Zoo. <laughs> and little children would now be asking their nurses, 
Tell me, Nana, is that the poor general, the one with the blue behind? <laughs> No offense meant, Pete, old chap. No offense taken, you damned limey. <laughs> About the job, I felt the same as you, Cecil. <laughs> Get into a crap game? Not while he gets around. <laughs> you crazy people put a jinx on you. <laughs> it wasn't no good me trying to explain to a crazy guy. It ain't the right time. Hurry! You know how getting reinstated is. <laughs> Just, I'm cockeyed. <laughs> but he's your own cockeyed. The pigeons were all all right. <laughs> let's, let's have another. <laughs> What's the matter, Larry? Why, you keep your eyes shut. <laughs> you look dead. What do you need to find a backyard? You crazy fool. You give me bad dreams, too. <laughs> Hello, man. You go. Sit down, have a drink. Have ten drinks, Mrs. Hello, little Hello, nice, funny little monkey face. What comes to my pleasure? Sure comes the day of dead man. Give me ten drinks, Eric. Don't be a fool. about you, honest. Yeah, what kind of gag is this? Come on and join the party, you brother. Bejeez, I'm glad to see you. Hey, well, come on, what's going on here? Where's that louse hickey? Oh, the cops got him. He's gone crazy and croaked his wife. <laughs> oh, so forget about that who was stuff. I'll knock the block off anyone called you who is. <laughs> Your thoughts and yeah. what the hell of it. You're as good as anyone. Yeah. Don't forget it, see? <laughs> it's a little bottom, ain't it, bottom? And the cute little kitty is And is he stinking? That's right, but he ain't got nothing on us. She's talking to me up in this time. Where's Larry? Uh, uh, oh, over by the window, boss. Uh, He's got his eyes shut. Uh, the old bastard's asleep. How oh, the hell would him let's have a drink? Uh, <laughs> yours in the name of the grill, apostles. That's the only way out for him. Peace of all concerned, as Hickey said. <laughs> Damn his yellow soul. If he doesn't soon, I'll go up and throw him off. A dog with his guts ripped out that you'd put out of his misery. I think they're just a wee dog in doors. <laughs> and the young shadow never grow less. <laughs> Yours, the last. <laughs> what 
Such a hell was that? Something fell off the fire escape. A mattress, I'll bet. Some of these bums have been sleeping on the fire escape. <laughs> well, they, they got to cut it out. But Jesus, this, this ain't no fresh air cure. Mattresses cost money. Poor devil. God rest his soul in peace. <laughs> I'll never be a success in the grandstand or anywhere else. Life is too much for me. I'll be a weak fool, looking with pity at the two sides of everything till the day I die, and may that day come soon. I'm the only real convert to death that Hickey made here. From the bottom of my coward's heart, I mean that now. Hey there, Larry. Come on over and get paralyzed. Where the hell are you going sitting here? But oh, Jesus, let's sing. Let's celebrate. But oh, Jesus, my birthday party. But oh, Jesus, I'm Ori eyed. I want to sing. Every Sunday, down to our home we go. All the boys and all the girls, they love her so. Always jolly, hot full of true She is the sunshine of paradise. Me and my school love will never be the same.